Today I will show you my latest approach to nicely highlighted and worn and weathered ultramarine armor painted only with a brush. Hey guys, I'm Zoltan and you are watching Phalanx Miniatures. In one of my recent videos I painted a pretty cool 10th edition Terminator in metallic armor and I turned him into an ultramarine by painting one of the shoulder pauldrons blue. So I thought why not paint a proper blue ultramarine as well in the same style and this time without an airbrush to brush up on my brushwork, you might say. So if you want to see how I highlight slightly chipped and weathered blue armor from red in the shadows all the way up to blue and almost yellow in some spots, with volumetric highlights all around, lots of scratches and chips to make it look worn and glaze over them with a brush to integrate everything together, ultimately resulting in a display level ultramarine, then let's do this. I start from a black prime model and before I do anything else I will take a photo under my desk lamp at the same angle that I would like to use as my main viewing angle for the mini. I will do this both from the front and the back, so it's actually two main viewing angles, I guess. And later I will use this reference photo to help me decide where I should place my highlights. I will probably not copy the light placements fully, but it will give me a good starting point. Alright, now that we have the photo covered, it is time to start painting some nice reds. If you are new to the channel, this is probably the point where you start scratching your head a bit, but trust me, there is some method to the madness. Black shadows are really boring and we don't do them around here. Red, on the other hand, is a great shadow color for anything blue, so that will be our base coat. Most of the time I use some brownish reds for this, mostly whole red from AK or Vallejo, but this time I thought I would try a proper vibrant red, burnt red from AK Interactive. I tried it pure first, but I found it a bit too bright for a shadow, so I added a tiny bit of black to darken it down. Something like 10-20% black should do the trick. I cover the whole surface with this, leaving no black visible. This paint covers quite nicely, especially mixed with the black, so one nice thick layer should be enough. Now we can start painting some actual blues, starting with dark Prussian blue from AK Interactive. Normally I would mix the red and the blue together to make blending them easier, but this color is dark enough that I can layer it on top of the dark red and easily blend it together with some glazing. I'll cover around 80% of all the armor panels with this. I don't care too much about light placement at this point, for now I only try to leave the deepest shadows in red. Like for example the inner parts of the lower legs, the bottom part of the shoulder pads or the underside of the arms. But it's still worth checking the picture you took in the beginning to avoid making a deep shadow area where a light should be later. I use a consistency that is significantly more diluted than the one I used for the red. I don't want to cover the surface in a single pass since that would create a very harsh separation line between the red and the blue. Instead, I aim for covering the surface in two or three passes. This allows me to make the second and the third layer slightly smaller, starting them inside the first blue layer I painted. This way the edge of the blue layer will be slightly more transparent but the inner part will be fully opaque. This helps with blending the two colors together, but it's not enough. I also add some scratches and dots with the tip of the brush inside the part that I left red and especially around the line where the blue layer starts. This will make the shadows look more interesting and textured, but it will also help blur the transition between the two colors in the next step. Once I'm satisfied with my dark Prussian blue layer, it's time for some glazing with the same color. I dilute it quite heavily and remove most of the water from the brush on my paper towel that I always have around the wet palette. And then I start painting this mixture in between the red and the blue layers. I start the brush stroke in the red layer, dragging it over my little scratches and dots over the transition line between the two colors and end the stroke in the fully opaque blue layer. If I did it right, my dilution is correct and I remove most of the water from the brush before applying it to the model, the paint should slightly cover the red part, leaving the scratches visible but smoothing them and integrating them into the color around them and creating a transition between the two colors. You will probably need two or three coats for this, letting them dry between applications. You can do it in a single pass if you got the mixture absolutely perfectly right, but that is very difficult to do and will probably result in you covering too much. So just stick with more than one and you will be fine. Also, ideally don't make everything too smooth unless that is what you want, since we are going for a slightly worn look here. Now we are getting to the second highlight and this is the time to check the picture we took in the beginning to see where we want to start focusing the lights. I will use a 50-50 mix of dark and light Prussian blue for this one, but if you want to make the process a bit faster and you are willing to put a bit more effort into glazing than me, then you can also get away with immediately going for pure light Prussian blue. More color mixes in between make it easier to blend the colors, but they require more time investment as well, so it's a choice between time and quality. With this color I will mostly follow the reference photo when I am placing the highlights. Also remember the opaque area that we fully covered with dark Prussian blue in the previous step? Ideally these highlights should be inside that area and leave around 20% of that previous color visible around the new highlight. 
I use scratchy brush strokes to create my highlights. This way the line where the new color ends will be also scratchy and uneven, which will make it easier for me to blend it later. I will also blur the edge of the line even further with small stipple dots, scratches and in general some random marks with the brush. Just be careful not to do too many of these in the previous shadow area, otherwise you will make it too light. Ideally do most of these around the transition line and in the previous color only. In addition to the lines on the panels and the scratches, I'm also painting all the edge highlights with this color. At this point I don't care if the edge is facing down or up, if it's an edge it will get an edge highlight. Once I'm done with all the highlights, it's time to switch to a glaze again. The method is the same as before, but this time I'm trying not to touch the deepest shadows that are still mostly red. I will start dragging the paint from the pure dark Prussian blue layer towards our new dark and blue mix layer. And just like before I do this 2-3 times until I'm satisfied with the coverage. Remember to not cover the scratches too much, we need them somewhat visible. The next highlight is easy since I will just repeat the previous step but on a smaller surface with pure light Prussian blue, this time not mixing in anything. The only difference is that I mostly only cover the upward facing edges. The next highlight will be definitely trickier and requires more attention but I leave in some of this footage as well so you see what I was doing. Now the model is starting to look highlighted, but that means that I'm getting to the more difficult part since now we need to push the brightness. I will mix around 30% ice yellow and 70% light Prussian blue and use this mix to highlight further. And you might be asking why I'm not using another brighter color or simply mix in white. The thing is, if I mixed in white it would desaturate the Prussian blue into a much less vibrant color, something like a sky blue. And that could work of course, but I don't like it as much as the more vibrant blue the yellow mix produces. So far I haven't found a paint that is similar to the blue and yellow mix out of the bottle, but if you guys know one you can let me know in the comments. In the meantime adding yellow to the base color is an easy solution for me. What makes this step tricky is not the mix, but the fact that at this brightness it will be much more difficult to blend the colors. And we need to be more precise as well, more deliberate about where to put the lights. It can't hurt to check the reference photo again at this point. And once I start adding these highlights, you will probably think that they are too bright and this guy will look over highlighted in the end. The reason I'm doing this is because the brightness of colors is relative to the colors around them. These might look almost bright enough for final highlights now, but by adding even brighter colors later, I will make these ones seem more subdued and dark. Also, adding the even brighter elements around the blue later, like the steel and the gold metal parts for example, will make the overall blue seem darker as well. At this point it's also important to know how shiny or matte you actually want the armor to look. If you want to make this look like metal, the highlights need to be bigger and the contrast higher, meaning that you should push the brightness close to pure white. I'm not going for a metallic look here, but we still want to have something that looks at least satin and not matte. So I need medium sized highlights and I don't need to reach white, just close to something like ice yellow in the brightest points in my lights. And a couple more things to pay attention to. I'm not using this color everywhere on the model. Up until this point I used the previous colors mostly everywhere, but from this stage on I concentrated more on one side, especially around the chest and the head. This will create more contrast since now there is not only contrast between one side of a panel and the other, but also between the left and the right side of the model itself. Also with my edge highlights I start only partially covering the edges. Some edges like the ones on his upper chest are only covered on the side the light is coming from, the rest can be faded out with some dots. When I am done, it's time to glaze again, but due to the white pigments in this mix, I need to pay more attention to the dilution. It's much easier to leave the mix too thick and accidentally cover everything instead of just creating a transition. Alternatively, you can do reverse glazes as well, where you glaze with the previous color from the light towards the darker areas, but it's too easy to mess up the shadows this way, so I mostly use this to fix some mistakes I make with the light mix. After this things become easier again. I already have all the lights marked and now I simply need to mix in more and more ice yellow to make them even brighter. So first I brighten up my highlight color by mixing 50% ice yellow and 50% light Prussian blue. At this point I drastically reduce the size of the highlights and repeat the previous step but on an even smaller surface.
And once I have everything that I needed covered, I will glaze again to integrate everything and smooth things out. Then it's time to do one final highlight with around 70-80% ice yellow and 20-30% light Prussian blue. This last highlight I only use in a super small area inside the most prominent highlights and on parts of some select edges that are the most in the light. And now there are only a couple of final touches left. First I take some of my original red and black mix and fix some of the elements that I accidentally painted blue. This will let me see better how the blue really looks. Finally I will add some additional weathering. This will look scary but it will make the model look more realistic and interesting. All we need is a small piece of foam and some whole red. I will wipe most of the paint of the foam before applying it on the model, then I start gently touching the foam to the model in some strategic places, mostly in the shadows and mid-tone areas, but also at the edges where the armor would get the most wear and tear. And once I'm done I can also highlight some of the whole red marks I created with some blue under them to give them a bit of depth. Ideally you should use lighter blues in the light areas and darker ones in the shadow areas, but I was a bit lazy here unfortunately and it shows a bit, so do better than me. Alright, with that our blue armor is done. It looks quite good in itself, maybe a tad too bright, but now let's see how it looks with all the other elements painted in. As you can see, all the other colors around the blue darkened it down significantly, to the point where I could have actually made it a bit brighter, especially in the mid-tone areas. But I think he is quite cool nonetheless and I'm quite proud of him, especially considering that I restrained myself and didn't use an airbrush. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and maybe learned something that you can also use in your own projects and if you did please consider giving it a like and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one.